Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today we are going to be taking a look at one fantastic little EDC combo of knife and pry bar highlighting the Flytanium Arcade as well as the Arcform Alt Pry. Um, now, when it comes to pry bars, this is a pretty unique pry bar, and I have to say, I'm enjoying this a lot more than I thought I would for a couple reasons. We'll talk about that. And of course, we got a whole lot to say about this arcade here. I have been dying to get my hands on one since they came out. Finally, was able to pick one up at Blade Show West and really excited to bring you guys uh, my thoughts on this as well. But before I get into this, just want to thank you guys for tuning in. If you like what you see, please do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button, follow along, and I will continue to bring you the content. Now, let's take a look at some overall specs on this knife right here. We have an overall length coming in at 7.70 inches, a blade length at 3.2 inches, and a blade thickness at 130 thousandths. Blade material on this guy happens to be S35VN with a very nice classic drop point style blade, a flat grind, a handle length coming in at 4.50 inches, and a handle thickness at 460 thousandths. Uh, handle material, now there's a lot of options here, but what you're looking at right now is aluminum and micarta. And in just a second here, I'm going to have one more handle material to show you. Uh, we have the shark lock for a locking mechanism. And this is not, this is not a knockoff shark lock. This is the actual Demco shark lock. Uh, I can only assume Demco was certainly getting a royalty from Flytanium for allowing them to use this lock. And, uh, I gotta give Flytanium a lot of credit here because to go out and, uh, and get there, find a way, find a way to bring the shark lock onto this uh, first knife from Flytanium is very, very nice. And so maybe it's not the very first knife. I know there was a battle song that came out a while back from Flytanium, uh, but the first kind of like real EDC folding knife. Um, someday I'm going to get a battle song. Um, I'm just going to buy some Band-Aids with it. <laughs> uh, but we are looking at a user of a right hand only tip up carry. Uh, weight coming in at 3.4 ounces. Pretty light feeling knife. I got to say, it, it, in all honesty, it kind of feels a little less than 3.4 ounces. Just does not feel that heavy at all. Um, and the price kind of varies on this guy. Uh, there's a few different model options or versions of this model. Uh, they range from $199 to $219. So a tight range. It's not too drastic. Um, I believe this model is much closer to two hundred dollars than two hundred and nineteen. I think I want to say this is somewhere between like two hundred to two hundred and nine dollars for this exact model. Uh, so I really have I'm struggling to find any complaints with the price, um, especially with the shark lock. Like this is uh, pretty much where it's been at, and it's a nice combination of of a premium steel quality materials and just a really really good overall design. A lot of good lines to this guy. And uh, we'll talk more about this in typical Wayne Sharp World Review, going over the handle, blade, uh, action, all that good stuff. Uh, but now let's take a look at this pry bar here because this is very interesting. Uh, we have an overall length of four inches with a width right here at three quarters of an inch. This is single billet machine titanium. So as you can see, kind of like, you know, integral. It's one piece. There is no, there, there's no screw, no nothing. The clip the actual pry bar itself, all one billet. Uh, weight, stupid light, 0.97 ounces. Um, this guy is coming in at 84 bucks. And what's really cool with this is, so here's the thing, I'm gonna get this out of the way because it's kind of taking away the focus on this. Um, this is the thing with this pry bar. So when you, if you were to buy this pry bar, it'll come in this box, which is actually a really nice box for a pry bar. But in here, it comes with a little file and there's even instructions right on the file too sharp give the corners a couple passes on here and then you kind of finish it maybe finish it off there i thought it said something on the other side i looked at this before i could have swore it said something on the side maybe it didn't i was just seeing things but anyway give it a couple passes on this side here and what that's going to do because you will notice um, this has, I won't, I won't call it sharp. Like I'm definitely not going to cut myself by doing this, but it's a very acute edge. And this is one of the reasons I really like this pry bar because what I actually use a pry bar for is more so scraping, more so scraping than actually prying. 
Uh, very few times do I have I actually used a pry bar to pry. Now, I have used it for that before, and they work great. I actually have not had to use this to pry with yet. Um, I have full confidence it would be just fine, but I have used it a lot for this end right up here to, to do some scraping, and I got to say, this is probably the best uh, EDC scraping tool um, outside of a blade, of course, but it kind of sucks using your blade to scrape because you can dull up the edge. Um, very, very handy. Really handy. And if you're not going to do any scraping and you do think this is too sharp, um, yeah, they send you a little file to kind of knock the edges down. I don't think I'm going to do that because I've carried this now for a few days and it's been in and out of the pocket lots of times. I haven't had any issues with... Uh, with the corners here kind of touching my, my pocket or cutting it or scraping it to where I'm worried a hole is going to get started or something. I would say it's, a, it's kind of an acute enough angle to where I could see that being a concern for some people. Um, but carrying these in jeans now for over three days, I, I just haven't had that issue. So I'm not too worried about it. Um, kind of depends exactly what you're doing. If you're running around a lot and all this, you know, crazy up and down, maybe it could. But I really like this. Um, I found it to be very useful. Um, and the only drawback to it that I'm seeing, while I love the fact that it's single billet, I think this looks, it's a really clean design. Arc form is, is known pretty well for just very clean, fresh designs. And that is what you have here. The only concern I have is if you're carrying this in your pocket and you, you cut a corner too quick and bend the clip here, it's just one piece, so you could maybe bend it back, but you could find yourself with all sorts of issues there. Um, in my opinion, though, the only drawback to this, and you know, it's, that's just not a concern for some people. So if it's not a concern for you, I wouldn't have any concerns about this piece. Uh, it's really, really cool, and I love the fact that while I'm a little skeptical, or not skeptical, but a little leery about the fact that it's single build in case you bend that, that clip, I love the fact that it's single build because I think it looks awesome. Uh, it's just a really cool piece of machine titanium that actually comes in very, very useful. And uh, I have actually used this a lot more than I thought I would already. So um, probably the most I'll ever talk about a pry bar in a video, but I just really like it. And on the back here, um, it's it has some extra milling out to reduce weight. And it also makes it very nice to pull out of the pocket. You just have the extra little dip here that for your thumb to go in. So it's very easy to pull this guy in and out of the pocket. Uh, just a really well thought out little pry bar. One of the sleekest pry bars I've come across. So really like this, the art form alt pry. And now let's get in to the knife. The Flytanium RK. Let's do some size comparisons real quick. Uh, let's throw in a couple Spider Co's, a couple Kaisers, and see just what we have here in terms of overall size and length. Here's the PM2. Here's the pair of three. And as you can see, very much right in the middle there. Uh, yeah, really is just right in the middle between the PM2 and pair of three. And let's bring out a Kaiser sandwich. Get us some other... Other good budget knives out here. We have the Drop Bear as well as, still the cheapest Escort around, the Kaiser Micarta Escort. And I say cheap because it's $89. So nice, uh, nice little budget knife there. But there we go. There you go. There's that size comparison. I think those will do everything you guys need. For the size of this guy, it's very much a, a nice medium sized knife. And uh, it's a really good looking knife. I was talking to a couple guys at the Flytanium and Artform booth about this particular design. And while I've always been a fan of the Shark Lock, I liked it more on the big 8020. The 8020.5, I didn't like the budget version. I liked the idea of a smaller version, but I didn't like the, you know, the in, the mold the injection molded handles and and kind of the cheaper approach they took to it at first. But I can get behind this. Um, the shark lock is just fidget bliss. It's an incredibly strong lock. I mean, there is no rattle, no shake, no nothing. Very strong, very reliable lock. And for the way it act, that it, it works, the action of it is very satisfying. Uh, as well as the sounds, it's it, it's kind of just a nice uh, fidgety sounding knife. And it is just as fun to fidget with in hand as it sounds. So very, very nice thing there. Uh, the blade, we are looking at 21 thousandths behind the edge. 
Uh, so yeah, it, it, it's just fine for anything EDC. Nice smooth edge. I didn't have any issues with this. Um, it's a very nice classic drop point. So, you know, if, if classic simplicity is your thing, this is a very nice setup here. Thumb studs and the Demco lock, the shark lock for deployment works just fine. And the handle is very, very nice, very smooth. I like this design with the shark lock better than the 80-20.5. Uh, no offense to Mr. Demko. I, I, you know, I like that knife. I just, I, I really like the, uh, the more classic fresh approach using this, uh, this shark lock. So really been enjoying this. Um, I like the inlay design too. It's, it, it's nice. It's kind of like a big bolster up here, but, um, just proportionally very nice. Looks very nice. Uh, clean transition lines. Now these are replaceable though. So you don't quite have that super flush like Riot transition line because they do come out. Um, it's still a very clean line though. Like I remember my hands around here. You don't like it's not like a big bump or they're not like elevated on the on the scale or anything. As you can see, it looks very very flush and it feels flush too. It, it does feel very good. Um, I actually have some scales here and just so you guys know, let's take a look at the packaging for this because. These knives actually come with a set of replacement scales. Now, they're nothing crazy special. They're just black G10, but that's actually really cool because it's a completely different color. So if you wanted to take the micarta off for some reason or if something happened to the micarta scales, you do have some black G10 scales to fall back on, which is nice. And they do have a uh, pretty nice texture on them. So yeah, I can get behind that. That's really cool. Uh, comes with the sticker and then of course a pouch and a nice padded secure box. So um, yeah, nice nice little offering overall for the knife itself. But then if you want to upgrade, which you know I just had to do, right? Um, you can actually, so this knife does not come with a backspacer, but you can get a backspacer, which I did. I picked up this little set here, which has some screws and whatnot there's some other little parts in here is there yeah there's another little screw in there but this is the overall backspacer and that will go obviously right here as you can see and it'll line up almost all the way with the shark lock so i've got the, this is just black titanium and then i also got these guys right here which were some carbon fiber replacement scales which i think are super sweet excellent fit and finish on these guys um, I was going to do the swap immediately, but I figured I might as well just build a little patina into these scales before I take them off. And they're patinaing up very, very nicely, as you can see here. Kind of like what you're seeing up here, the darkness mixed into the end of the scales. That's eventually what you'll see in, in these other areas here, um, the more I carry it. So they're patinaing up very, very nicely. And uh, I don't know if they'll get to full patina, though, because I'm really, really anxious to, to put these carbon fiber scales on and see just uh, just what they look like. I feel like that with the uh, with the black with the black backspace there is going to look pretty sweet. So I may do that sooner than later. But you have options, and they have all sorts of options: carbon fiber, titanium, some color G10. Um, they have a lot of options, and I'm sure there's going to be even more coming down the road. So um, that's always really nice when you have the. Uh, the, the flexibility to, to, to change a knife up, because it's really nice to put like, you know, I, I can't remember the prices on these actually. I'll have everything linked below. Um, but, you know, to instead of spending another $200 to spend, you know, 40, 50, 60 bucks um, and swap, change your knife up and have it look like a new knife. That's always cool to kind of freshen things up. Um, but the handle feels good in terms of the handle. And of course the action, there's really nothing different. I will say, uh, I was very surprised at how similar the overall action and feel of this knife is compared to the 8020.5. I guess I shouldn't have been surprised, though, uh, because in terms of size, this is very, very similar to the 8020.5. So um, nothing really new to report there. The 8020.5 is an extremely popular model. So if you've owned that and you like the action on that, this is basically that, in all honesty. I've, I've noticed no difference myself. Uh, very, very easy to thumb flick. And of course, all the good fidgety, flicky goodness with the shark lock. Um, it's, it's right here. So I gotta say for the first, uh, for the first true folding EDC knife coming out of Flytanium, I think they hit this one out of the park. Um, excellent, excellent design, great material, solid price, 
very, very happy with the arcade. And uh, if you're if you're a pry bar person, I definitely check out the Arc Form Alt Pry. Uh, very cool, unique offering from Arc Form. And uh, that's that for today, guys. That is one really cool carry right there. Let me know what you guys think of these two pieces. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And until the next one, I'm out.